Hi, I want to talk to you about Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 5. This is where it talks about a small child. It says, At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. Now, this is certainly talking about becoming simple, like a child having a simple faith. And that has been preached off many pulpits. But there's a lot more to this. To give you a bit of a background on this, basically, Matthew, who was recording this, is a Jewish man. And he was writing to Jewish Christians. And so that was the whole focus of the Gospel of Matthew. So in saying that, what he was doing was he was focusing in on something that really you need to be Jewish to understand, and that is the Passover. So to put a set of a background on this, before Jesus said this, on three separate occasions in the Gospel of Matthew, he makes this statement. The Son of Man is about to go to Jerusalem. He's about to suffer there at the hands of men. He's going to be crucified. He's going to die. Then on the third day, he's going to rise again. Now, his disciples really weren't too keen on this. But he was setting the stage. He was saying, we're heading to Jerusalem. We're about to have the Passover. I'm about to die. That's what he's saying. And he's going to rise again on the third day. Now, with this in mind and with that as the background, we read this with a whole different set of eyes. Sort of talk to you something about Passover that involves children. And it especially involves a small child. So this is what it's about. It's about the matzo. Now, this is matzo. Basically, it's what they call unleavened bread. Now, you'll notice some things about it. It's flat. It doesn't have any yeast in it. And you'll also notice it's got stripes on it. And it's also pierced. It's got lots of holes in it. Now, this lines up with Isaiah chapter 53, where it says that he was pierced for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. Now that was prophetic about Jesus, the Passover lamb. Now interestingly, Matthew does something that none of the other gospels do. He uses the word convert. He said, unless you're converted. Now that means to be turn about, reverse, go back again, a self about. It's like doing a 360 degree. It's almost a variation on the word of repentance. So what Jesus is really saying here is unless you repent, unless you change and then become like that small child, you'll by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. All right. So what's the story about the Marzo and how does this involve a small child? Well, basically, leaven can represent sin. Generally, that's the key thing that it represents. But leaven also can represent anything that gets into our life and infects it, takes over it. It just gets into everything. Now, in the case of Passover, the leaven was Egypt. It was their gods. It was the world system. So they had to get the leaven of the world, those false gods out and follow after the one true God. Now, as you can see, with no yeast in it, it's flat and they had to cook it in a hurry. So that tells you that this is the bread without leaven. So if it represents Jesus, it means that he is the bread without sin. He's the bread of life. Also, it's pierced. So like the soldier pierced him at the cross after he died. And remember the water and the blood ran out when he was pierced in the side. So this too represents Jesus because he was pierced. And also he was stripes. It's got the stripe marks on there. It's got lines down through it. And that was the whips the, um, the beatings that Jesus received. All right, so during the Passover, what we do, and we do this as a family, is at one stage in the meal, we take the thing called a matzo tosh, which is a bread bag, and that's matzo just means bread. Inside this bag are three separate compartments, and each piece has got a piece of maso in it. Now, they say that this represents unity. So there's three pieces of bread in perfect unity. Now, there's a lot of debate about what this means. The rabbis teach that it could mean the patriarchs, you know, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Others say it represents the unity of worship, the priests, the Levites and the people of Israel. 
But as Christians, we believe that the unleavened bread, which is God, represents the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And interestingly, they always take the middle piece out. So they take the middle piece of matzo out of the bag, pull it out. This is the dad of the house does this. If it represents the unity between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, why do they take the middle piece out? But if it represents the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we know why they take the middle piece out, because it represents Jesus. Now, the father of the house does something. He breaks the piece of bread in half, and what he does is he takes that half and he puts it into this other bag called the afikoman. That just means it comes later. So once he does that, this here represents being wrapped up in linen and it represents death. So when Jesus died, they wrapped his body up in strips of linen and they buried him. And then on the third day, he rose again. Now it's at this point that the father goes and does something in particular. Watch what he does. On the night of Passover, the dad takes the afikoman and hides it somewhere. So the child searches the room and looks for the afikoman. The child comes with the afikoman, gives it to the father, and the father gives the child some money. So when the child hunts out this, the afikoman, it is always traditionally the youngest child in the family. Now in our family, I get both children to do it. It makes it a bit more fun. But here's the lesson in it, and this is the conclusion, that it's the father who paid the price. He's the one who redeemed us and paid the price for us through his son, Jesus. Now Jesus is the bread of life. He's the one without sin. He's the bread of life who was pierced for our transgressions. He was striped for our healing. And he's the one that was in perfect unity with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He was the one that was taken out. He came amongst us, was born as a baby, lived as a man, and he was fully man, fully God, and his body was broken in death upon the cross. Then he was wrapped up in linen, and then he was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. And that's the lesson of the child who comes to the Father. Because at the end of the day, it's only through Jesus that we can come to him. And that makes this passage so much more powerful. And I think that's what Matthew was trying to get across. Well, that's it for now. God bless and bye for now.